Uh, currently, we are at the Rifko Woodlot uh, in Foster, Rhode Island, which is in the western part of the state. Uh, one of our more rural uh, communities, rural parts of the state. Um, we, the, the woodlot is a mixed hardwood woodlot. Um, typical, pretty typical of this part of the state. And uh, we here at RIFCO uh, have uh, managed this woodlot uh, as a demonstration site with um, the assistance of the USDA and RCS uh, with a management plan that was recently updated. We've been involved with RIFCO in various NRCS conservation programs for well on 15 years now, from the update of their management plan to the use of various conservation practices to improve the overall health and vigor of their property. Going back far enough, this was all cleared farmland. Within the three acre habitat cut, at one, at, there's one at each end, they're old pasture oaks. They're large oaks that were at one time providing shade for cows that may have been grazing through this land. Um, and of course, once the cows were gone, the forest regenerated. At the time, there weren't the deer that we have now, so the oaks were able to establish themselves so that here it is. 2020 and we have a maturing stand of mixed hardwood trees. As part of our management plan to enhance uh, bird habitat, um, so it's uh, forestry with bird, Rhode Island birds uh, in mind, uh, we established uh, about five acres of forest stand improvement thinning, which is behind us here, a strip, and then in the very back, the three acre habitat cut, around which, a portion of which we are doing, uh, we are establishing a slash wall to limit the deer browse impacts within that slash wall. So the slash wall is basically just a curtain of the limbs and treetops, which, which is what we refer to as logging slash, in a perimeter form. Uh, are surrounding a, a, a clearing and it's typically at least 10 feet wide and five or six feet tall and the deer won't jump into it, jump over it uh, and get into your clearing. It could be used in place of eight foot tall deer fencing, which is rather expensive to install. So we're hoping that the, the slash wall practice will be an affordable way of using the material on site to limit the browse of oak and maple in these habitat clearings. The slash wall is built using the logging equipment that the co logging contractor will bring onto site, whether it's a, um, a grapple skidder to pull the trees and the treetops and the slash up to a machine that will then grab the slash and stack it into this long ribbon of a slash wall. Uh, using a grapple skidder, uh, single arch grapple skidder to pull the stems, which are scattered all over the place, to the dangle head processor. Uh, it's a track machine with a processing head that actually will fell, delimb, measure, cut to length. Uh, we will have an opening at one end where people can get in to see how things are going for future management to maybe cull out a deer that managed to get in there and now can't get out. That's a possibility. So we've left in the three acre habitat clearing, we've left a scattering of oaks and hickories and uh, for seed sources and um, this site will revegetate. This slash wall only has to last for a few years until the regeneration, the tree the stump sprouts and saplings get above a certain height that the deer can't chew the tops down. And so after several years, this slash wall will slowly decompose to a point where it'll just be a bunch of rotting sticks rotting into the ground. Hopefully this will, will help limit that deer browse damage in the future. 
and allow the tree saplings and shrubs, the native ones, to fully occupy the site to provide that scrub shrub habitat for a certain number of years, which will eventually develop into the new forest down the road.